Hello, N4H and H here. Uh, one of my uh, viewers, Don, asked if I'd shoot a video related to uh, how I use 60 meters, how I use and monitor it. And uh, if you haven't watched the video series I did um, two or three months ago, it's a three part series all about 60 meters in great detail. Um, I mentioned, yes, uh, in the video that I shot yesterday that was uh, explaining how to get uh, access to the 60 meter channels in this guy here, the uh, uh, FT891, which has caused some confusion for folks who own that radio um, because it comes pre-programmed with the 60 meter channels and if you never went into the memory mode of the radio, you wouldn't have seen that. Um, and I did mention the three-part video series that I did a few months ago, um, all about how uh, we obtain 60 meters, how we share it with the government. And um, so uh, the question kind of, you know, comes up about how do we share this with the government? Well, um, we were just allocated these five channels. They call them channels. And uh, you see here, I'm on uh, channel two right now, which shows 5.348. Now, I happen to be in the USB uh, channel, on the USB channel. So when I transmit, if you remember, if you watched the video yesterday and even the one from months ago where I explained 60 meters, we're not really, our carrier for USB is actually 1.5 kilohertz below that. The display is going to show you the center of the channel, which, by the way, if you were doing CW, that is where your carrier is. But we can't do sideband from there because we're, we only we can only occupy 2.8 kilohertz of bandwidth. And if we were to do a sideband from there, uh, upper sideband, we would get outside of the, the boundaries that we're allowed. So all that in-between space in the five megahertz band is uh, allocated for government use. So we have to stay in our lane, so to speak. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with 60 meters, and again, I go into great detail on this in the video series from a few months ago, uh, t three or four months ago, um, the five channels, uh, we have essentially five that we can use for USB, five we can use for CW, but they're really all the same channel. It's just where do we transmit our carrier? Okay, well, in sideband, we're not really transmitting the carrier. It's being suppressed, but the carrier that is being suppressed is 1.5 kilohertz below what you see uh, on the readout there. Now, um, and I, I mentioned this in more detail in the um, older video there from three or four months ago when I did the series of um, why we got the 60 meter band. So I just quick honorable mention, it fit, fills that gap between 40 meters and 80 meters as far as range. And so, it is a great band for emergency communications. As far as, yeah, okay, when we first got 60 meters, we were limited to 50 watts ERP. Now we're limited to 100 watts ERP. If the government were to come in, if an official from the government came in on one of our frequencies and says, hey, we need you guys to back off, we need this frequency, we're legally obligated to give it up. I've never heard that happen, but um, that, could, that could happen. And we would be obligated to stand by and let them have the channel. So far, I, I don't, I'm not aware that that's ever been an issue. I hear people that say, well, I never hear anything on 60 meters. Well, here in the Southeast, and I live in Metro Atlanta, th listen, there's channel two. Um, and let me move over here to channel one. Ah, so hear that? Remember, we're occupying the same bandwidth, whether we're doing uh, CW or um, uh, voice. So I'm, even though I'm, on the USB uh, mode here, I can hear the CW because it's only 1.5 kilohertz away. So I know now, and listen to that, channel three, usually in the evenings, channel three is digital. During the daytime, not so much, but at night you'll hear FT8 on channel three. So there's channel one. If you hear CW going on, you don't want to really start a voice conversation here, just be nice, because you know, you can hear it. You can hear it. Uh, if you were doing CW, you could hear the voice in there kind of honking. And if you were doing voice, you'll hear the CW in there beeping. So give it a listen before you use it. If somebody's using the channel for CW, then leave it alone. Um, so channel two is currently occupied with a voice uh, communications. Channel three is currently occupied with some FT8. 
Oh, look at there. Channel 4's got some CW going on. And Channel 5's got a um, QSO sideband. So now I'll go to Channel 1 in CW mode. And these, these are all pre-programmed in this radio. Just like with the 891. They were in the memory. So all I had to do was go to memory mode, which is this button right here on the uh, FTDX 5000. And, um, and then cycle through the memories. There was already one memory in there, 7 megahertz. And then after that, I saw these, which are the u the user memories or u me or u memories, um, and it you'll see here that five one is u five dash one is channel one of sideband. Channel six starts the CW. Uh, when I say channel six, sorry, memory u five six starts the CW portion. That's programmed into this radio. So we knew that, that we know there's a voice uh, QSO going on on 5405, which they're technically transmitting 1.5 kilohertz below that, but we'll still hear them because they can occupy a 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth. Channel 4 right now has a CW uh, QSO. There's a good bit of action on the 60 meter band. It comes and goes maybe. Um, there's more activity now than there used to be and I'll tell you why, SOTA. Um, in the Southeast, we have a lot of friends. We, we get together for summits on the air. We have camp outs, we have cookouts. And uh, so we get to know a lot of these folks and it's a great band for us to be able to, uh, to uh, operate as a SOTA activator, the person up on the mountaintop, summits on the air. And then as a chaser, because of the range that it allows. 20 meters, we're flying over one another's head, usually 40 meters even. Um, and then um, 80 meters during the daytime is not great. So, And most soda operators are out during the daylight hour. So 60 meters provides that range of coverage just like what that agreement was with, uh, um, with the government so that they would allocate us these five channels. The original reason was, okay, if there was a national emergency, ham operators can help out for the emergency using 60 meters because of that, it provides that in-between range. So just think of it, in, in, in the daylight hours when 80 meters isn't great, 60 meters is. And yes, at night, 60 meters will go long, just like 80 will. I've made 2,000 plus mile contacts at, at night on 60 meters. So, um, so it just, it just provides that in-between range. So our soda friends, for us to be able to chase one another when we're too far for two meters, too close for 40 meters or 20 meters, and 80 meters is not great in the daytime, boom, there's 60. So it's just a great band, and you'll hear a lot of regional QSOs on it. So uh, here we go. Again, channel three is where you're going to mostly hear digital. It looks like channel one's cleared, no CW. Now go back to the voice part. And again, you're still looking at the same center frequency, it's just what mode are you gonna use? So here's mode USB. Channel one is completely available. You know, you say, well, we've only got five channels, that's gonna be crowded. No, it's not, you see? A good bit of time you have, you can have a QSO on here because a lot of people don't know about the magic band, okay? A lot of folks call six meters the magic band. For us soda guys, 60 meters is a magic band. So there's a QSO on channel two. FT8 again on channel three. Ah, somebody doing CW. So again, he's, he's 1.5 kilohertz above, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna see. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking right now 1.5 kilohertz below where he is. Even though the dial says 5.373, that is where he is. But I'm in USB mode, and the radio internally is shifting it down 1.5 kilohertz. And they have to do that for legal reasons. Um, if you if you, I mentioned in the previous video, while that is, so I'm not going to get into it here. Um, in 54.05. Not occupied. So if you want to get on here and have a, a regional QSO with your friends, channel up. Oh, somebody's coming in there now with CW on channel five, but channel one is still unoccupied. 
Two is being used for voice. Three is usually FT8 at night. During the daytime, FT8's not in there usually, so you can use channel three for voice. And again, channel four's got CW. Let me switch back over to the CW channels. I thought I heard somebody start it up, some CW on, up oh, there it is. He said test. Somebody, somebody t doing a test. Couldn't be a contest. You're not allowed to contest on the 60 meter band, which is another good thing. So if you don't like contesting, cloud, uh, crowding the uh, band on the weekends, um, you know, this, the work bands, uh, 12, 17, uh, 60, 30, no contesting. Okay, so Don, I hope that answers your question. Um, but yes, uh, you know, 60 meters is a great band and um, very popular now with summits on the air operators because we, we, we want to be able to uh, let our friends in the region see summits on the air. If you haven't looked into it, it's a, it's a point system. It's a way for us to uh, practice off the grid communications. And so, so we have to operate off battery or solar power, makeshift antennas, you know, hike up to a mountaintop. Hey, some of them you can drive to, uh, but mostly you hike. So you get a good, good outdoors exercise and you're operating with uh, usually, you know, after you do it a little bit, if you're carrying around, you know, heavy gear, you're going to learn how to scale down. And that's why you see a lot of summit on the air operators using QRP CW rigs that honestly are about the size of an Altoids can. And run on run on a, a nine volt battery. I've got one of those on order, and I'll be doing a review on it uh, when it comes in. Um, an LNR Precision MTR four B version two. Um, you know, carrying the eight ninety one around has been great. It's been a great radio for me for soda. But for some outings, I want to be able to uh, lighten the load. Uh, my friend Joel KC four WZB showed me his backpack last night. He's com completely loaded radio, antenna, water, food, and all under five pounds. That's just amazing. But he's, again, doing it with a QRP rig. So a lot of the guys doing soda because they're having to hike up a mountain um, or, or, you know, down on using QRP rigs. And so uh, that's one of the reasons I chose the FTDX 5000. I went to HRO and I just, I w it took me eight months of sitting down there listening out for weak stations, QRP, uh, soda or anything else, even voice, uh, finding the radio with the best noise floor and the ability to pull those stations up out of the weeds. And so um, that's the reason you see a 5000 sitting in front of me and not all of the other wonderful radios out there that I could have picked. And there were some good contenders, don't get me wrong. But this one edged them out every time. All right. So anyway, again, Don, I hope I answered your question. And uh, anyone else who's watching this, I uh, hope, hope you found something um, out that you didn't know. Hope you enjoyed the video. And thanks again to my Patreons that uh, help keep the channel going. And uh, if you want to help out, www.patreon.com slash N4HNH. And if you subscribe, that'll also help keep the channel going. All right. 73 from N4HNH.